One of the most common questions I get asked is how I mix my custom colors and what colors I use. Well, I don't always want to give away my secret recipes, I am going to share with you four of my favorites and the four that are asked about the most. I pretty much only use fusion mineral paint now. When I first started, I used a lot of different chalk paints, but I prefer fusion. I like the way it covers. I like the way it goes on, the texture of it, and I like that it has a built-in top coat. This video is not sponsored by fusion. I just really like their products. The colors you see on these pieces are three of the four colors I'm going to be showing you how to make here. This deep, luxurious navy is actually the most asked about color that I've ever made, and I'm gonna show you how to make it. My name is Angie, and I'm the one behind Transcend Furniture Gallery, a business created from the love of vintage furniture and the desire to take broken, dated, and unloved things and turn them into modern treasures. Sometimes I paint, and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Okay, we have a clean jar. One thing I like to do when I'm mixing custom colors is peel the label off because a lot of times my mixes are so close to the original color, sometimes I just need to tweak it a little bit and I don't want to get them mixed up. So if you just peel the label off, immediately you'll know it's a custom mixed color in that jar and there's no confusion. So these first three jars already have the ingredients or the colors that I'm going to be adding as well as the measurement marks and I'm going to show you how to do that on the jar we just cleaned up. So you can make these lines any measurement you want. I choose centimeters. It works out so that it's almost perfectly eight centimeters. Each centimeter becomes a part. So if a recipe calls for two parts of whatever, you're filling it up two centimeters. There's so many different ways you can do this. Some people measure by weight. I'm honestly not that fussy about it that I would have to weigh each part, but you know, to each their own, it depends what you're doing. If you need to be able to exactly recreate something, maybe it is better for you to weigh it. But for me, this works. So I'm using the new jar here to make that beautiful dark blue color and these are the ingredients and I'm going to actually give you actual measurements. This color has five parts midnight blue, two parts ash, one part coal black. And before you write these down, you'll see here the one I'm writing now, I actually messed up on. <laughs> I didn't have the numbers quite right and I'll fix that a little bit later on in the video. So. Wait till the end before you write these down because I would have fixed it by then. Okay, time to mix up our first color. I see here it's two parts ash, four parts bayberry, one part upper Canada and one part putty. And you just want to make sure that colors you're adding are mixed thoroughly. So a good shake or stir. And then we just pour in up to the line. This is ash. It's two parts ash, so I'm pouring up to the second line. One way to help keep your lids from getting crusty is to make sure you just remove any wet paint before you put the lid back on. On to the next color, Bayberry. We're doing four parts, so we're going to go up to line number six. And the third color is Upper Canada. It's only one part, so we're going to pour up to line number seven. And the last part is Putty. I just have to open up a new jar here, give it a good shake. And we're going to fill up to the very top line. I don't like to fill all the way to the top of the jar. That's why I stop my lines right where the lid starts to curve in a little bit. It just gives that little air gap, makes it easier to stir without spilling it and shake it. Shaking alone isn't really enough to make sure this is thoroughly mixed. So I'm going to use a little popsicle stick here and scrape the paint down off the sides. You can see here, there's still a little bit of ash. This is just going to push that down and then I'm going to stir it again just to make sure it's fully mixed. 
and that's it. We have our first custom color finished. And on to the next one. This is the recipe I messed up. I used to have my measurements go up to 10. I wrote down the recipe for 10. So how I changed this, there's only two parts ash, two parts Upper Canada, three Renfrew, and then I added two putty, but as you know, that would add up to nine. I ended up going a little bit above on this recipe. Sorry about that, I couldn't recreate this shot, so just telling you here. I'll also put it in the description box below and at the end of the video where I pop it up on the screen. Keeping in mind that you will have to fill slightly over your eighth line. As far as this impacting the final product, even with this adjustment, it'll still be pretty close to my original recipe. So when I show you the shot at the end of the piece that's painted in this, it is going to look pretty similar even though we tweaked it a slight bit. So yes, the actual recipe I made here is only two ash, two upper Canada, three run fruit, two putty, but again, that adds up to nine, so you're gonna be slightly above your eighth line. If you follow this exactly, you can always tweak it. One thing of note, if you're opening a new jar and you don't wanna get a handful or faceful sometimes of paint, when you take this little thing off, just scrape it along and you'll save all that paint as well instead of wasting it. One thing that's pretty common with fusion jars is that sometimes the lids are extremely hard to get off and I'm gonna show you a little tool to help you. This little piece of rubber type material, it's very cheap and it just helps give you some extra grip. Save your hands, people. I'm gonna put a link to this down in the description box. Totally worth getting this if you use fusion or any other paint that has these screw on plastic lids. This color we just made is very close to Sacred Sage. You can see the original color on the left. It's just a little bit lighter and it's just something a little bit different that I like to use. And that's it. We've got four awesome colors. I'm gonna show you once again the color and then a piece that's painted in that color. Sacred Sage is the base for this color, and our new color is on the left. Midnight Blue is the base for this color, and our new custom mix color is on the left. It's close, just a little bit deeper. Bayberry was the base for this color, and our new color is a bit lighter and has just a touch of gray. My apologies for fudging the numbers on this one. This new mixed color will be fairly close, but if you want to get this exact color that you see on this dresser here, what I would do is just divide your jar into 10 segments, use my first set of numbers, and you'll get that exact one. The recipe we just made here is close, but it might be slightly lighter. Just keep that in mind. I totally wanted to remix this color with the proper measurements, but unfortunately that was my last jar of Upper Canada Green and I could not. So again, my apologies. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. Thank you so much for watching and if you have any cool color recipes you want to share, leave them in the comments and we can all give it a try.